Welcome back to our course in Networks and Distributed Processing based on the textbook by Jim Caros and Keith Ross entitled Computer Networking, A Top-Down Approach. We've been discussing the network layer of the TCP IP model and in the last lesson we started on the topic of addressing and forwarding so we'll pick up where we left off. We'll see in Module 5 that not all link layer protocols can carry network layer packets of the same size. Some protocols carry big datagrams, whereas other protocols can only carry little packets. For example, Ethernet frames can carry up to 1500 bytes of data, whereas frames from some wide area links can carry no more than 576 bytes. The maximum amount of data that a link layer frame can carry is called the maximum transmission unit. You recall our discussion of that earlier. Because each IP datagram is encapsulated within the link layer frame for transport from one router to the next router, the maximum transmission unit of the link layer protocol places a hard limit on the length of an IP datagram. Having a hard limit on the size of an IP datagram is not much of a problem. What is a problem is that each of the links along the route between the sender and the destination can use different link layer protocols and each of these protocols can have different maximum transmission units. Imagine a router that interconnects several links each running different link layer protocols with different MTUs. Suppose you receive an IP datagram from one link. You check your forwarding table to determine the outgoing link and this outgoing link has a maximum transmission unit that is smaller than the length of the IP datagram. The solution is to fragment the data in the IP datagram into two or more smaller IP datagrams, encapsulate each of these smaller IP datagrams in a separate link layer frame, and send these frames over the outgoing link. Each of these smaller datagrams is referred to as a fragment. Fragments need to be reassembled before they reach the transport layer at the destination. Both TCP and UDP are expecting to receive complete unfragmented segments from the network layer. The designers of IP version 4 felt that reassembling datagrams and routers would introduce significant complication into the protocol and put a damper on router performance. Sticking to the principle of keeping the network core simple, the designers of IP version 4 decided to put the job of datagram reassembly in the end systems rather than in the network routers. When a destination host receives a series of datagrams from the same source, it needs to determine whether any of these datagrams are fragments of some original larger datagram. If some datagrams are fragments, it must further determine when it has received the last fragment and how the fragments it has received should be pieced back together again to form the original datagram. To allow the destination host to perform these reassembly tasks, the designers of IP version 4 put an identification, a flag, and a fragment offset field in the IP datagram. When an IP datagram is created, the sending host stamps the datagram with an identification number as well as a source and destination address. Typically, the sending host increments the identification number for each datagram it sends. When a router needs to fragment a datagram, each resulting datagram is stamped with the source address, destination address, and the identification number of the original datagram. When the destination receives a series of datagrams with the same sending host, it can examine the identification numbers of the datagrams to determine which of the datagrams are fragments of the larger datagram. 
When the destination receives a series of datagrams from the same sending host, it can examine the identification numbers of the datagrams to determine which of the datagrams are fragments of the same larger datagram. Because IP is an unreliable service, one or more of the fragments may never arrive at the destination. For this reason, in order for the destination host to be absolutely sure it has received the last fragment of the original datagram, the last fragment has a flag bit set to zero, whereas all the other fragments have this flag bit set to one. Also, in order for the destination host to determine whether a fragment is missing and also to be able to reassemble the fragments in their proper order, the offset field is used to specify where the fragment fits within the original datagram. Now you see an explanation of those three fields we talked about in our last lesson of identifier, flag, and the offset. Figure 4.14 that we see here illustrates an example. Packet is sent from router to router. One large datagram was fragmented and three smaller datagrams came out, went to the next router. It did not reassemble them in the next router in order to save time and forward them to the last router. And the three datagrams were passed up to the network layer where they were reassembled and then passed on to the transport layer. A datagram of 4,000 bytes, 20 bytes of IP header plus 3,980 bytes of IP payload arrives at a router and must be forwarded to a link with a maximum transmission unit of 1,500 bytes. This implies that the 3,980 data bytes in the original datagram must be allocated to three separate fragments each of which is also an IP datagram. Suppose the original datagram is stamped with an identification number of 777. The characteristics of the three fragments are shown here. The values in this table reflect the requirement that the original payload data in all but the last fragment be divided into multiple of 8 bytes and that the offset value be specified in units of 8 byte chunks. At the destination, the payload of the datagram is passed to the transport layer only after the IP layer has fully reconstructed the original datagram. If one or more of the fragments does not arrive at the destination, the incomplete datagram is discarded and not passed to the transport layer. But as we learned in the previous chapter, if TCP is being used at the transport layer, then TCP will recover from this loss by having the source retransmit the data in the original datagram. Be sure to note that this Retransmission is the responsibility of TCP in the transport layer. We have just learned that the IP fragmentation plays an important role in gluing together the many different link layer technologies. But fragmentation also has its costs. First, it complicates routers and end systems which need to be designed to accommodate the datagram fragmentation and reassembly. Second, fragmentation can be used to create lethal DOS attacks, denial of service, where the attacker sends a series of bizarre and unexpected fragments. The classic example is the Jolt 2 attack, where the attacker sends a stream of small fragments to the target host, none of which has an offset of zero. The target can collapse as it attempts to rebuild datagrams out of the degenerate packets. Another class of exploits sends overlapping IP fragments, that is, fragments whose offset values are set so that the fragments do not align properly. Vulnerable operating systems not knowing what to do with overlapping fragments can crash. As we see soon, a new version of the IP protocol, IPv6, does away with fragmentation altogether, streamlining IP packet processing and making IP less vulnerable to attack. 
At your book's website, the authors have provided a Java applet that generates fragments. You provide the incoming datagram size, the maximum transmission unit, and the incoming datagram identification. The applet automatically generates the fragments for you. You can see this by going to www.awl.com slash kuros-ross, K-U-R-O-S-E-R-O-S-S. Well, that covers the topic of fragmentation for this lesson, so let's go ahead and take a break at this point. Go over your notes, update your study guide, and when you're ready, come on back for the next lesson.